Hey guys, it's Liv here, bringing you guys another video. Today, we are gonna be breaking down the Zacian Crown Suspect Test, and I will be going over my personal opinions on it. Because, obviously, uh, Zacian is one of the most notable Pokemon in the Ubers tier, and as someone who plays at least a fair bit of Ubers, um, I actually am like, kinda considering doing this Suspect Test, which is a first, I'll be honest. I've never really thought about doing a Suspect Test, and I don't know if I will, to be fair. I've done like four games, and I don't know if I wanna do more. Um, just because kind of just burnt out on ladder, but we'll see what happens I don't usually do suspect tests though just because it's usually like a whole commitment and everything But I did at least want to give my thoughts regardless though because I thought it was very interesting uh, Now for anyone who doesn't remember um, I have mentioned a few occasions that I thought the first uber suspect test of crown tundra would actually be on Caliax. So uh, you can imagine that I was very very surprised actually to see that the first suspect test was not Caliax, Rather it was Zacian crown So I did a bit of uh, of digging of course and real quick, actually, before I get into the reasons, actually, I'll get into the reasons why they're testing it first, because I do think it's kind of important to address that before we get into what makes Zacian Crown broken. So they actually have a whole portion of the Sussex test page, which I'll link down below. I'll link that, and I'll also link the sample team page down below for any of the teams that I do go over. Um, but they have a whole paragraph on here, actually, that, that explains why they chose to do Zacian Crown before Shadow Calyx. And I think... I'm, I'm gonna be honest, until I read that, I was very, very confused as to why the council picked Zacian Crown first. Not to say it isn't broken, because I still definitely think it is, but I did certainly think that this personally changed my stance on why I on why I thought it was dumb that this went first rather than second. Um, but we'll go over that real quick. So basically, their points bring up how if you if you look at a lot of the Zacian Crown checks, it's stuff like Necrozma, Quagsire. And then stuff like Zygarde, Ho-Oh, and Groud on the soft checks, but the main two are Duskmane and Quagsire. Um, and both those mons can get pretty easily beaten by a Shadow Calyrex. A spec set should kill both of them pretty easily, if if not Oko. Um, so, yeah, that's, for example, I'll actually pull up some Quagsire calcs real quick. Uh, because that's the more, that's the not super effective answer. Uh, to be fair, it probably still takes less, I, it still probably takes more anyway. But if we pull up Calyrex Shadow, for example, and we give it 2 to 2 special attack, Astral Barrage. So even without a boost to get them, to note, to uh, defense Def Quag, which is the set you need to run to check Zacian Crown, does 84 to 98. And now that that's like assuming you're a Scarf set or like a leftover set. Now if you go with like a Life Orb, you already guarantee the KO doing 109 min to Fizz Def. Uh, and a Choice Spec set would do 125. So versus Choice Specs, uh, literally uh, Spidef, Spidef uh, gets you the same rolls with Max Spidef, which doesn't check Crown, as you would get versus a Scarf variant running Fizz Death. So obviously it's not taking it that well. Um, and that's not even, like that's just off of specs, before any boosts, so you're clearly not ever switching in on this. Um, and after taking a Zacian Crown hit as well, even if Quag did one of you want it, which it's a soft check at best, it doesn't, well it can, it's one of the more consistent checks, Zacian Crown can definitely muscle past you with like a spike setter or two. So it's not exactly a perfect counter. Um, now, if you take that into account with, let's say, uh, for example, uh, Zos, uh, Necrozma Duskmane, I will pull up a 4 Spidef 252 HP set, because that is, again, what you need to run to check versus this. And versus the spec set, again, it's a guarantee Oko. So both of, both of the checks to Zacian Crown do get completely Oko. And even soft checks, like, for example, uh, Zygarde Complete. We'll pull up Zygarde Complete. Um, so this set still, even versus specs, in complete form, takes around 60% minimum. Um, that is a 12 HP, 240, I know, 48 Spidef set. Now, I'm assuming it's just Fizz Def, but even, like, a Fizz Def, 4 Spidef, or Max HP, 4 Spidef, does a 57 min. Um, so, yeah, just to put into perspective, obviously, and then Ho-Oh worries about Psy Shock, less so Astro Barrage, but still worries about Psy Shock, and then Groudon, obviously, again, uh, is gonna be taking a lot from Astro Barrage. So... If you, if you take that into account, uh, if Zacian Crown was to get banned, and a lot of these Pokemon became less stacked on teams where you're running two or three checks on every team, then hopefully Calyrex, by comparison, will become less dominant in the meta. Um, because at the very least, a Veltal in comparison is already a meta-defining Pokemon as it is. Even without Calyrex, it would still be up there for a fair amount of things. Um, Dustwind is two, to be fair, but it's a lot more Fizz Def oriented because of Necrozma. Uh, because of uh because of Zacian. So because of stuff like that, obviously Calyrex is able to at the very least still be consistently checked by a set that's very splashable on teams. That isn't also being stacked, and it's a lot easier as well because Necroz uh, because unlike Necrozma, 
a volatile has reliable recovery, which is going to be my next point. It, in the current DLC, with Kyogre being a thing, Moonlight is now in tandem with Zacian Crown, a lot less of a reliable way to get around Zacian Crown, because with the rain, you're only healing up 25% of HP, which means that obviously you're not going to be able to heal up enough to actually 1v1 Zacian Crown, because you're going to take a couple close combats and then no longer be able to take it. So that's definitely a concerning thing for sure. So Zacian Crown obviously also coming in with plus one attack is pretty destructive as it is. Uh, that's why Quagsire was the premier counter. Um, at least before Duskmane started running Fizz Death, that is. Um, in general, though, uh, one of the other things as well is if Calyrex went, Zacian Crown becomes a lot more annoying, considering the fact that, at the very least, Calyrex is able to outpace Zacian Crowns. It's one of those sort of things where, like, Calyrex is definitely a broken Pokemon, for sure. However, if we ban that, this becomes that much more terrifying. So that, that was basically the logic, and while I still think that Calyrex should be banned regardless, uh, I do at least get it. Um, I think in hindsight as well, one of the things that definitely plays into me thinking that this wasn't going to be the first aspect test was just how long it's been around. Uh, I personally kind of gave up on the idea of a Zacian Crown suspect test ever happening once the first DLC came out, let alone the second. I thought that they would have banned it before even the first DLC came out personally, because if you look at just Zacian Crown in general, after the plus one attack boost on a jolly set, it's harder it hits harder and then Jolly Mega Mawile does, and it hits nearly as hard as Adamant does, while having speed that outpaces pretty much everything in the format. The only exception right now is Shadow Calyrex and Scarfers, and even then it outpaces a fair bit of Scarfers. Um, so that is a pretty concerning thing to be fair. And on top of that as well, is a, a pretty obnoxious set of bulk with 92, 115, 115, which is, especially for an offensive mod, that's pretty astronomically high. Um, even as far as uber standards go, for an offensive Pokemon with as good speed as it has, that is insane for both. On top of the Fairy Steel typing, which is in my opinion the best typing in the entire game, there's no dual typing in my opinion that rivals this, considering the fact that Steel is able to handle Fairy, which is such a predominant type in the metagame, while the typing together is able to handle Dragons phenomenally, and Fairy in general on a physically offensive Mon is so, it's so few and far between, the only examples that I can really think of offhand are like Bulu without coverage, Coco without coverage, and then Mega Mawile and Granbull. And those are the only ones I can really think of for like physical fairies. And even then, Granbull's not good. So it's really just Mega Mawile, which isn't even in the game. Um, so it is very, very few and far between to get a Mon that is a physical fairy that is able to still actually apply pressure with good fairy coverage. And on top of this as well, it also has great coverage for its counterplay. For example, uh, while it's not going to do nearly as much as like a player off or Behemoth Blade would, which do hit obnoxiously hard, and keep in mind Behemoth Blade as well, being a base 100, no drawback steel move is also insanity, but this thing also has coverage for very common Pokemon, such as for, for example, versus let's say Lunala, even if Calyrex was to get banned before this, it would have Crunch for stuff like Lunala, uh, Wild Charge for Ho-Oh, which is considered one of the better, like, soft checks. Uh, Close Combat and Behemoth Blade will still hit obnoxiously hard versus most Pokemon in the meta. Uh, it's able to, of course, use Assurance and Crunch to hit stuff like Duskmane, for example, which is again considered a notable counter. So this Pokemon is definitely a pretty terrifying beast, to say the least. On top of that as well, it has agility and sword stance to get past several considered offensive checks. For example, if you agility, then Calyx is no longer going to be able to offensively check you, even with a scarf. So you're able to run pretty bulky agility sets on this, which makes that bulk go that much further. On top of this as well, that if you're able to sword stance on a switch, which you can force a lot of switches with this Pokemon, so it's not hard to do that. Uh, sword stance is pretty great. Substitute as well, if you're able to sub on a switch and then pick off something that comes in, you're able to easily get around stuff like forcing, for example, something a second Mon to come and break your subs, so that way then Calyrex can actually damage you, because Calyrex will not take a hit ever versus this Pokemon. So it's definitely a very terrifying beast to say the least. Uh, on top of this as well, it's just been a contender for the best Pokemon in the format ever since it came out. For example, if we look at the viability rankings, I can't name you a time when it hasn't been S rank. It It's pretty much like Primal Groudon and Steroids in that regard, in the sense that it's always been at the top of the metagame. And it's pretty clear cut at the top of the metagame as well, even in the Dynamax metas, obviously it's being able to hit Behemoth Blade, which does enough damage to justify hitting versus Dynamax mods, considering the fact it doubles the damage to account for the double in HP, which is incredible offensively. And the fact that, again, it's a steel move, was able to hit a lot of the metagame pretty strong, on top of also, again, having stuff like Wild Charge, Player Off, Fire Fang, uh, Assurance, Close Combat, etc. So it has a plethora of options, which for a Fairy type, especially a physical one, that is incredible. Um, now, if we look at the metagame Pokemon, um, we'll go through all the Pokemon regular A rank 
and above. And we'll just, because those are like the top contenders currently, let's say. Um, and we'll see how many this, this, that we'll see how many this Pokemon can actually beat or how it can at least beat them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna really quick put up the viability rankings. So for example, Zacian Crown, uh, speed ties, agility on the switch, um, before it comes in, etc. then go for Behemoth Blade. So that is an option. Uh, Calyrex, agility, Behemoth Blade, etc. And Veltal, if it's not Scarf, play off it out the bat. If it is Scarf, um, the obviously agility variants, we get around this pretty easily. Eternatus, now Eternatus is actually a Pokemon that can, like, soft check. Um, for example, if we put up Eternatus, and we'll pull up a Fizz Def spread versus Zacian Crown. Now, it's obviously not a switch in, because, I mean, Behemoth Blade still does half to standard Fizz Def. And even versus not standard Fizz Def, if we pull up just max Fizz Def in general, uh, you still take 46 to 54 from Behemoth Blade, which is a pretty decent amount of damage. So, obviously this does a flamethrower, which should be fair. You could potentially, with Black Sledge and Leftovers, get rolls good enough to actually beat this 1v1. However, if this ever towards stance on the Switch, then you are kind of fucked, because you now take 76, and that's no longer beating 1v1. So, SD on the Switch and Adonatus, it's still definitely checked. Um, that's definitely one of the, that's probably the loosest one so far I've had of the speed tie winning from Kali, by from uh, Zacian Crown, but it is still an option nonetheless. Um, and it's a very, it's a very possible option too, it's not like it's a real stretch or anything. Uh, Duskmane, probably, again, this is considered the best check in the tier, um, so the fact that this can still get muscle pass by SD Crunch is pretty bad. Uh, Zyger Complete, kind of has to bank a no fairy move, otherwise it gets muscle pass pretty easily, unless it's like already set up the coils. Uh, Kyogre, Scarf, to be fair, would destroy it outside of, of course, an agility set. But if we pull up even just like bulky Kyogre, um, Wild Charge before boost does, well, it Oko is non bulky, but even versus like Magic, Max HP does 97 to 114. So it's definitely not impossible. Again, agility or even like webs against this particular mod, which also webs help a lot with this as well. There are a lot of good web setters right now, like Shuckle, for example, is a great web setter. Uh, I guess Slurpuff is an okay web setter. I personally like it, but it's not a good one by any sense. It's really Shuckle. Shuckle is like the best web setter in the tier, if I remember correctly. Um, let me actually double check that. I want to fact check that because yeah. Okay. So Shuckle is the highest ranking right now. Um, it's definitely the easiest to fit. It's good for roll compression, but webs would help with a ton of these as well. Xerneas, don't even need to get into how that gets checked. It's pretty obvious. Uh, Groudon, for example, uh, let me pull up Groudon real quick. So even versus a Fizz Def Groudon or a more defensive Groudon, uh, obviously Behemoth Blade actually is pretty checked by this. Um, 41 to 49 versus this, and obviously with leftovers, it's a guaranteed 3 KO, even after rocks, which is pretty good. However, you have to take into fact that obviously you can run a Spiker. A single set of spikes, for example, would actually, even without rocks, give you a chance to KO or to, to a KO. So it's no longer switching. Obviously, an SD brings that to 70% min versus Groudon. Uh, Groudon also running Precipice Blades, if it isn't running Raw Earthquake, versus, on a Fizz Def spread, for example, isn't even a guaranteed kill. To be fair, Precipice isn't even the guarantee. But Earthquake actually, nor Overheat on a Fizz Def spread, would be able to actually KO from full versus Crown. So it could actually muscle pass anyway, um, depending on the right coverage, of course. So, also the fact that Playoff does a fuck ton of damage in general against this Pokemon as well. Though, actually, never mind, never mind. I was looking at the plus two packs. Okay. So, yeah, no, Behemoth Blade would still be the strongest way to hit. It still does a decent amount of damage for a Fizz Def check, which again is pretty incredible to think about. Um, and also the fact that Groudon has no recovery outside of rest. So, definitely something that can get pretty easily muscle passed. And just with over time, not a consistent check. Uh oh, even with Regen, Wild Charge still does a fuck ton to this Pokemon. Not the best check. Uh, it is a good soft check against any wild non-wild charge spread. It's a really good check, but otherwise, if it has wild charge, it's screwed. Uh, Zekrom, playoff, fucked. Firethorn, close combat, fucked. Gothitel doesn't fucking beat this. Um, I will say, actually, to be fair, versus non-SD variants, Goth could potentially set up cosmic powers or charm spam in PP Solid. However, if it's an SD variant, it's still fucked. So, if we're like, that's, again, the A rank, and I don't even need to go on how, to, how this tier gets smashed. Uh, Marshadow obviously gets destroyed by player off, close combat, player off, player off, and close combat, and then Lugia just gets SD'd on, to be honest. Lugia can't really touch us out of Earth Power, which is never running. It just isn't running in this format. Hasn't been. Um, and th that's, like, the notable Pokemon. If you go any lower, like, these start to get stretched category, like, for example, Lunala. No one's running Lunala with their Shadow Cali in the tier, even though Lunala is just an objectively good Pokemon. It's just, it's just so outclassed. And then again, you scroll down and you see a lot more of these like outclassed Pokemon that are like kind of notable. So it just goes to show like that there's not really a lot of consistent checks. 
Um, so Zoxian Crown is definitely able to muscle past even a lot of these Pokemon. While some of them, again, we had to get into a bit more like hypothetical territory, it's not exactly impossible to get past any of these Pokemon. Even Zoxian Crown itself, which says a lot. Um, so I do personally think this is a pretty destructive Pokemon for the tier. Um, and now I guess next point would be what would Ubers look like without Zoxian Crown? Now, this is a question that has plagued the minds of Ubers players for the entire generation. And I'll be honest, I can't really say what. If we pull up, for example, the sample team spread, um, this is the current sample teams. As you can see, five out of six of them have Zacian Crown. It's a pretty no drawback option. Uh, the only Pokemon that even kind of rivals this is Eveltal, which also has five teams. However, the difference being is that Eveltal is a lot less of a, is a lot less of a dominant Pokemon. It's there because of circumstances. It's not necessarily there because it's running the metagame. That is Zacian's job to do. But Zacian is a pretty terrifying Pokemon. Uh, it not only tears up a lot of these teams, but on top of that as well, without Zacian Crown, there's not really great replacements on a lot of these teams. For example, if we look at this team in particular, this team already has Duskmane on it, and it's benefiting just from a random Zacian Crown on there, which is pretty... It's just going to go show how destructive the Pokemon is. It's pretty no drawback. Uh, second team we have, uh, obviously, it's again, dual steel, because you have Duskmane to check Zacian Crown, and then Zacian Crown because it's so no drawback. Uh, this is quite literally, in my opinion, the definition of a big six team for this current format. Um, then we have this screen team, which is actually pretty cool. I like the Frostoss on it personally, because it's a fast spiker. Um, obviously, if we open the team itself, uh, you can see this Frostoss is debond, which is pretty cool. Uh, just as a nice suicide lead. Um, in general, though, this team, again, it, it just benefits from random support for Zacian Crown and then Zacian Crown tearing. Uh, this team is an exception. Uh, Scarf Cali is really here just because of ZZ, uh, because of other Shadow Cali, and then like a Veltal is your defensive check or like your switch in, and then yeah. So this team is sort of just an outlier in my opinion. Again, you still have the Dusk Man, which is again pretty mandatory. Um, Scarf Shadow Cali should be able to help just pressure like fat agility spreads at least for Zacian Crown, because without speed, for example, if we pull up a no speed set on uh, Shadow on a uh, Zacian Crown. So this would hit at 664. So if we go to 150, then we go to 22, Jolly, and then we go plus one for Scarf. So plus one with Scarf actually, um, never mind, it doesn't outpace anyway. Holy shit. Okay, I guess with webs it would outpace, but still. Um, point being though, is that uh the Scarf Shadow Cali still does help with uh with agility spread. I know agility spreads um with other Shadow Cali, and obviously a Veltal is a good switch in. This is like the exception. This one still just only has the Dusk Main. No other counter. Um, I guess Kyogre does help, to be fair, with, uh, with just in general. Actually, no, Kyogre wouldn't help with that. Yeah, no, this team has only Duskmane. Um, this team has Azure Sack plus Zacian Crown and then Xerneas. Again, just Zacian Crown because it's free. And then again, uh, Palkia plus defensively Nala. And then, uh, Zacian Crown again with Duskmane as a check because it's free. So, uh, looking at these teams, as I mentioned, uh, without Zacian Crown, a lot of these teams don't really have a suitable replacement for it. It's something that will definitely shake the meta to its core, because you're going to definitely be running a lot less of, for example, Duskmane's Fizz Def, at least offensive Duskmane, I think could definitely take a, a little bit of a up in usage. Also, for example, stuff like Groudon won't be running as Fizz Def, which means it could actually afford to run more offensive sets as well. Which offensive Groudon is a pretty cool just set in general. It's there's not a lot of great ground switch-ins. If we again look at the viability rankings on here, uh, not really any ground resist. Obviously, Zygarde Complete is a very, very good ground switch-in, even though it's not a resist. But like if we look at others, there's really the first actual resist to ground that comes up here. We don't get an actual ground resist until Bulu, to put it in perspective. Which should say something. That should definitely say something. All the other grasses are well, actually to be fair um obviously just as a ground resist there are flying types i should say i, I do want to mention that i'm getting uh i'm so used to zygarde and bbl that i'm forgetting that flying types are actual switch-ins to air to ground moves but even then just edge quake covers so many of these pokemon like if we scroll through quag would probably be the first check to that so i think the ground could definitely take a really nice role as an offensive sweeper in ubers um personally though i think that on top of this without zacian crown of the tier Kyogre will be a lot less pressured to running Scarf sets to just pick it off as a Scarfer if you don't want to, let's say, run Shadow Cali on a team. Um, so I think that could be pretty cool. Obviously, it's a lot easier for Kyogre to rampage the matter without having to worry about wild charges from Stray's Aussie and Crown's plummeting it. Um, on top of this as well, 
Uh, if we look at a lot of common Pokemon again, Quagsire would be a it, Quagsire would basically be non-existent in this tier. It would be like a D rank Pokemon or like a C, C minus, I guess, because D rank is exclusively for Uber's Pokemon that don't get usage or aren't good enough tier. So it would be a C minus Pokemon because it would still be good for like Zekrom, for example, as a soft check. However, it would get nowhere near as much usage as it currently does because it is literally just as used because of Zacian Crowd. Uh, Shadow Cali, I still think personally Shadow Cali will be a monster in the tier. I personally still see it playing in the format. However, I get the logic again that it will hopefully be less prevalent. I don't see it happening though, personally. Uh, Veltal will actually be a lot more annoying as well, to be honest, because Zacian Crown is a really good check to defense of a Veltal right now. Um, to be fair, Xerneas is still a phenomenal check and is still a very, very used Pokemon. And that will also be a lot more prevalent in the tier because the only actual steals that will pressure this thing now are Ferrothorn and Duskmane. And while those are still two very high ranking Pokemon, as you can see, Ferrothorn is at the bottom, well, second to bottom of A rank, it's right above Goth right now. Um, and then obviously Duskmane is top of A+. plus. Still the fact that there will just be one less dominant check and the fact that Zossie Crown also gets 50% usage right now uh, will definitely help Xerneas' case a ton. So in general, I do think that the, I think that a lot of Pokemon in the A plus rank especially will benefit greatly from Zacian Crown being banned. I think the only one that really doesn't care too much is Z Zygarde, though I will say that if Groudon does end up becoming one of the new physical sweepers in the tier, I will definitely assume that Zygarde Complete takes a huge spike in usage at that point, considering it would be a phenomenal just blanket check to it. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, let me know if you want to see some more videos like this i'm gonna try and get another uh i'm trying to get another ubers video up some point this week with some suspect test laddering uh, i'm trying to figure out what team i want to use so i'm still kind of different on that um but i will consider it i might even do a stream with suspect test laddering i'm not 100 sure yet but let me know your thoughts uh with that said i will see you guys in the next video peace out guys <laughs>